Hi, glad to be with you today. Um, and I do love jujitsu. And what I love about it is not only can I, you know, kick someone behind if I need to, but it's very good mentally stimulating because it's like chess only with people. You've got to figure out what your next move is. So I really like that about it. I love strategy. And that's one of my favorite things about marketing is strategy. So today we're going to talk about real life application and how we get these students to be able to get out of our classes and go into a company and know what they're doing. Um, I, when I, I remember, I was one of those people, I loved college. So undergraduate, I just had so much fun and I kind of never wanted to leave. And so that's why, you know, I tell my kids, they're talking and looking at how many more years of school they have. And I'm, I said, I went all the way. And my son looked at me and he said, what does that mean? I said, you've got a lot of years left to go. <laughs> but I really loved college. But when I got out and I went into my first job, it was a really great opportunity for me. I was working for an entrepreneur um, in the toy industry in Southern California. But going into that job, I didn't have a mentor. It was just me doing their marketing. And I got into this role and sat down working with the owner of the company and the people that they had. And I thought, I have no idea what I'm doing. I called my marketing professor, <laughs> help. And um, she had been great. We had a great relationship and she did come in and help me. I had a similar experience when I started teaching um, and I had a student, she, I had her for just one class, but she got sort of a similar opportunity. She married into a family that had this big medical practice, like multi-specialty medical practice. And they asked her to come in and do the marketing because she had graduated with a marketing degree. I don't know what else she had other than the one class I taught her but she called me and it sounded like she was under her desk. She whispered, <laughs> whispered into the phone, help. <laughs> and I said, what do you need help with? And she goes, can you just come over here? I was teaching in Michigan at the time and I, she was over in Illinois, south of Chicago somewhere. And I said, I, I, I can probably meet you. I'll combine it with something fun like shopping and out to eat and we'll get together. And she was in a similar situation. She needed to do a marketing plan. She needed to do all this stuff for this practice. And not only was it her job, but she had married into the family. So she had a little bit of stress associated with it. And so I worked with her and helped her put together a working marketing plan. And she said, you know, all the stuff I learned in college, you know, I knew a lot of theory, but I didn't really know how to put this together. So that was always my goal as I worked on curriculum and I worked with students, okay, how do we take these, these theoretical concepts and make them applicable so that they know exactly what they're doing when they get out in the real world. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the things. So what do I know? So <laughs> I've been teaching college for almost 30 years. It seems hard to believe I started really, really young. Um, but I am also a small business owner. So I've, uh, I own my own coffee bars. I have two locations and um, have had them for about 10 years. And what I can tell you as an entrepreneur in small business you have to know everything, <laughs> absolutely everything. And so I might know the marketing, but here's a lot of other stuff. I'm confronted constantly with IT issues and, and just a changing market dynamic constantly. So what I do with my courses that I teach is I use the real world examples from the coffee bar because coffee is a really simple concept. You have coffee, people want coffee, you sell coffee. <laughs> very easy to make the marketing theory and practice um, very uh, real world with an example like that. Um, I, I'm a subject matter expert. I've done that for a couple of universities and then I did help write a, a textbook a couple, I guess it's been a couple years ago. That took forever. Uh, people drop, it was during COVID and people just kept dropping out of the project. So initially I was supposed to write two case studies, ended up writing 18 case studies. Then they said, can you write one chapter? 
I said, sure, I'll write a chapter. And I did not realize how much work writing a chapter was. And then they came back and said, the other person dropped out on this other chapter. Can you write another chapter? So I ended up writing two chapters and 18 case studies. And I thought, wow, that was a lot of work. Um, but again, wanted to look at how do we take these theories that we're talking about and make them so that the students realize what they need to do out in the real world and how it applies to actual businesses. So a couple of things that I want to look at um, and kind of some learning objectives. We all do learning objectives, right, when we're teaching our students, but helping us to look at what are the drawbacks that a lot of marketing curriculum have. I don't know how many of you teach in the classroom versus online or maybe some who, who teaches in the classroom, Pr probably everybody. How many of you also teach online? Okay, so a little bit different. It's kind of hard to go back and forth. I said I teach for a lot of, I teach adjunct now for a lot. I quit teaching full time about 10 years ago and have been teaching online adjunct just kind of for whoever needs me. I told a couple of people yesterday during COVID, somehow I ended up teaching 14 classes all at the same time for 10 different universities because they had a lot of faculty that just weren't equipped to teach online or to take it online. I had one school, their, their professor, he had cancer and ended up dying in the middle of the semester and he was teaching two graduate classes and four undergraduates, so I got all of those. Um, so, it, there's a lot of different challenges that online brings to the table. And some of the universities that I teach for, it's just like facilitation. So you don't get much opportunity. And we'll talk kind of what that looks like as well. Um, and then look at how, how students are kind of unprepared right now for what, what they're going to be needing to do as business students. Sometimes they come into the business program having come from the gen ed classes, which are very different from business classes. And so they're very much in the process of writing papers and memorizing. And everybody can write paper, well, not everybody can write papers, but you, can, you write papers, you memorize without much thought to what do I need to do with this later other than regurgitate a lot of facts. And it's important to know a lot of facts in marketing. It's important to know the terminology, but it's more important to understand how we use that terminology. We're gonna look at some methods for practical application and create some content for classes. I'll talk about some of the content that we've created. Um, so what, if, what do we look at most marketing curricula that's out there? Um, we've got a lot of theory right? We've got a lot of terminology and we've got a lot of case studies. And even some of the classes that have just been redone at some of the universities I teach do more the facilitation for, they are still with here, you know, memorize all this terminology. And so the students can memorize that terminology and they can regurgitate it for a test that has, you know, maybe multiple choice um, they can guess from that multiple choice, but you know, in reality, what's that really gonna do for them? So as we look at that traditional curriculum, what do we need to know for marketing in the real world? Well, <laughs> there are a lot of factors and things, as you all know, being marketing professors, marketing changes very, very rapidly. So it's almost as if our curriculum that we're developing for our classes needs to be modified almost every single year. In fact, I'll have uh, one school that I teach for and you know, some adjuncts do things differently, but I'm always looking at these classes thinking, I want these students to be really successful when they get out there. And so I am constantly redoing their curriculum so that they have the most up-to-date information for digital, social, um, just understanding personas and demographics and how that changes and how that impacts everything that we do, um, you know, Really, again, through COVID, even our, our models of distribution have changed drastically. And I was talking to somebody here from Stuka, and I'm getting ready to put in the supply chain module um, for one of the classes that I'm teaching. 
really looking at how supply chain has been impacted and, and, and the challenges that that brings. Um, things have changed drastically over the last few years. So constantly changing, and it's very, very fast paced, a marketing world is. I had done, and th those of you who work for Stukent will love this, I had one of your modules in, and it was the, I, I believe it was the advertising uh, simulation. And at the end of it, I asked the students, um, what did you like about this course? What didn't you like? And one student said, well, I was doing really, really good. And he said, I was focusing on, on my client. And he said, but I would get all these obnoxious emails and messages from all these other clients. <laughs> and he said, so that really was, you know, that took up a lot of time. It was just really frustrating. And I said, so you're planning on only ever having one client at a time that you're working with. And he stopped and paused. And he said, well, that would be ideal. I said, well, except for if something happens to that client and then you've got no clients. And he said, oh, okay. I said, you know, that's sort of the challenge of working out in the real world. You're going to have multiple things going on at once. You can't just ever focus on here's this one thing that I'm going to do. So you've got to have that understanding of all the other stuff that's, that's coming in. And I think too, a lot of times students question, why, what are the deadlines? I don't know if any of the rest of you have had students that want to stretch those deadlines or we've got all these crises going on. It happens a lot online because they can't actually see you, you aren't face to face with them. So some of their excuses, they feel like they can get away a little better with them. But in the real world, we have deadlines that they're real and they have to be met. And so I think giving students those enforceable deadlines, particularly in marketing and business classes is going to be very helpful for them. And then making sure they understand the decisions are strategic. So with marketing, you've got all kinds of different variables in play that you have to consider. And I think students get used to looking at, okay, if we're talking about the chapter in um, distribution, all I need to worry about right now is distribution. Okay, well, there's a lot of other things that are going to affect distribution. If we're looking at price, they're only thinking about price, but there's all kinds of other things, as we know as marketers, that impact price. And so we've got to have these students to where they're thinking strategically and making sure all the variables are coming into play and they're making consideration for those variables. And also budget oriented. I've had students, I don't know about the rest of you, try to come up with some really wild uh, promotional plans for a small business. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, the small business doesn't have $500,000 for promotion. They've got like maybe 5,000 for the entire year. So you're going to have to, to modify this promotional plan to meet that budget. Those budget criteria are very important for this particular client. So while these things that you've proposed are fantastic, they're not going to work in this situation. And then the decisions that have consequences. I think students are very used to putting things together that really look good and they might meet some of the criteria for the assignment or the rubric, but not necessarily fitting what's gonna happen in the real world. So let's take a look at some of the things that uh, we can do to help students. And I don't know if any of you have ever had this problem, but I have assigned um, marketing plans. So one of the things that I like to do, and being a small business, I know a lot of small business owners in my particular area and they always need help with something. And so one of the things I did when I was full-time professor is I created a marketing research institute and I would have uh, my marketing students help with, we would do focus groups, we would do um, surveys, we would do a lot of different types of research for businesses in the area. Some of the businesses ended up being bigger businesses. A lot of them were small businesses. Um, but it was, we were able then to create real world marketing for the 
marketing research for these companies and the students were able to go through each of the steps of not only recruiting participants for a focus group but really analyzing the data writing the reports um, doing all these different activities for that market research but one of the things when we would do marketing plans for companies and I would give the assignment, you know, here's all the research that we did. Now we need to write this marketing plan for this company. We've reviewed their goals and their objectives and, and all of those things. The students would say, and this is still my favorite question, how many pages do you want that? So that harkens back to coming out of the gen ed classes where they're writing these assignments and uh, they've, they've been given the, the edict to write a 10 page paper. So I'm looking at them going, okay, if you're out in the real world and your boss comes to you and says, we need a marketing plan for the next year, the next fiscal year, and you look at your boss and you say, how many pages do you want that? You probably won't have a job. <laughs> I said, I want one page ideally, because in business, we don't have time to look through reams of pages to figure out what we're supposed to be doing. We need that information very quickly. I don't wanna read through paragraphs and paragraphs of information to figure out what my goals and objectives are. I want to see it in bullet points. And so what I often tell these students, business writing is very, very different from your creative writing that you may have had in an English class or a history class or wherever you just came from. So in business writing, it's much more difficult because you have to say a lot in a very few words in very few words and typically we want bullet points with our business writing because we have to look through that as a business team figure out what we're going to do we want a plan that really works so it needs to be something that we're going to look at we can easily identify what it is we're supposed to do and we can go get it done and i taught a, an entrepreneurship class this has been many years ago but, and it was before Shark Tank, so I think Shark Tank stole my idea, but I had, I had all of these business students, I would put them together in their groups, and they had to come up with a product, and they had to put together their business plan for this product, and they were going to present it to a panel uh, that included angel investors, uh, financial, a, a bank representative that, that did, worked with small businesses, and, um, uh, a venture capitalist and so I had called these three individuals pretty high level individuals one of them was actually one of the big donors for the university and uh, I asked them to be on this panel and they said they all said we have one criteria for it their presentations have to be five minutes or less and their business plan has to be one page we will only look at a one page business plan because that's all we do. When we have real life businesses come in, we want one page business plan. And so the students really struggle. I mean, that was a real struggle for them to figure out, okay, what is that important information that I'm gonna put on one page? And I even recently with my own business, I am putting together a business plan. I have some equity investors that wanna expand and put money into it. And I went to a business associate of mine in another business that I have, and I, he had, he's done a lot of, of building and selling businesses. And I said, Chip, I need your help writing this one page business plan. And so he went through it with me. He goes, it's, it's a, a fact, they want one page. And so trying to get these students to have one page, I still even have students that will say, how many pages do you want that? in their assignments and I'm saying, I want one page. And they struggle with that because they can write a lot of words and hope that somewhere in those words, they've created something really great. And so I want them to be able to boil that down almost to that elevator speech of what is the salient information that you have. Um, so creating those real world uh, things and knowing that those those decisions that they make if we're doing um, some kind of marketing for a small business 
those decisions that they make have consequences. So they need to have that research and that understanding of the situation to, to know that they're making the good decisions for these companies, that the consequences will be good. Because it's easy if you're doing a case study from a textbook and it's a company that's sort of made up and you have certain information that you've been given and you can put things on the paper, but they don't necessarily have the consequences of if you're creating something for an actual business. Now I went to Cowley's presentation, and I hope I pronounced that correctly, <laughs> yesterday, and I loved the stuff that he did with the students where they're creating real world things that they can actually turn into businesses for themselves. So I've even done a little bit of that same type of thing in my classes thinking about, okay, let's start a business. What do you want to do? Because there are a lot of students right now that they may have a job on campus, they may work for the local coffee bar, but they've also got a little side hustle going on. And a lot of students go into marketing because they want to be entrepreneurs and they want to be able to do something for themselves. And if I find that out, I like to talk to my students at the beginning of the classes, even if it's online class, to find out what it is they wanna do, what they wanna do with their marketing job, you know, their marketing degree. And if they have some kind of a passion to start a company, okay, well, let's work with that during this term. If we're gonna write a marketing plan, let's write that marketing plan for your particular business. If we're going to create um, some social media content. Let's do that for your business. Let's go ahead and do the research that looks at who are the competitors in this space so they have a real understanding of how those competitors might impact their business, how they can find their niche in this market and, and really take advantage of that. And then we have to change our strategies over time, and that's important for students to know too. That's why I love the simulations because they're always getting new things coming in, right? And the decisions that they made the last time may impact what's happening now, and they may have to make new decisions or change something that they had done before. And I can tell you having my business um, you know, a small business, a coffee shop, people are coming and going into it. The biggest kink we had was COVID. You know, they came in, they're gonna shut us down. I'm thinking, I've got employees counting on me. I've got, you know, how am I gonna get this business up and running again? I spent all night putting, uh, you know, putting my online orders and, you know, carry out delivery. Uh, in place once I heard, you know, once I got that edict from the state, we're gonna shut you down. I thought, oh no, you're not. <laughs> I'm still gonna make some money here. So, you know, I spent all night putting together this new website, putting together new content for my social media and really looking at how can I, how can I make it through this situation? There's always stuff that's gonna change and impact. You know, I started out in my community. I was the first coffee bar in that community. Then we got a Starbucks, then we got a scooter. So you've got competition coming in. You've got a changing demographic that you have to deal with. So we've always got things like that that are going on and students need to recognize that that will change your decisions that you made. And that's why I think any kind of simulation you can do, if you can't do something real world with real clients, some kind of simulation where they can understand that the decisions they make have consequences and those decisions are constantly going to change. You can't just set it and forget it. One of my favorite cartoons of all time, and I've used it throughout <clears throat> my teaching history. I don't know if anybody ever, I love the Dilbert cartoons. I know they're sort of a thing of the past and that does age me a bit, but there was one where Dilbert was in his cubicle and he put a whole bunch of a stacks of business plans, marketing plans together and sat on them. And he said, I realize now what, why we use these business plans because he could then see out the window that was on the other side of the cubicle. And I think a lot of people put those business or marketing plans together and it's like, it fulfills a requirement for something 
but nobody ever actually uses them. Nobody looks at them. Nobody looks to see, did we achieve our goals? How did the analytics that we're reviewing affect what we decided to do? And so, you know, when we're doing those social media um, assignments for students, having them really understand those analytics and how they're going to have to change maybe the ad strategy, maybe the audience strategy, maybe the content strategy, based on what the analytics are telling us. Um, students sometimes don't see what happens as a result of something that they've done. They've fulfilled the requirement, turned in the assignment, <clears throat> but what does that really mean and how does that impact uh, what they're doing? So always have changes and adaptations to your strategy. Um, <clears throat> so I realize I only have a few more minutes left. So a couple of things that we look at, one is we don't want things for business that look like a typical thesis paper. And I keep seeing that a lot, particularly with some of the universities where I'm just a facilitator <clears throat> and I really have no control over the curriculum. And so students will come to me and I'll kind of revise it a little bit. No, I don't want 10 pages. <laughs> Let's boil that down a little bit. So business is not marketing is not a typical thesis paper and i think we need to kind of shy away from that as much as possible um, it doesn't look like just general information students need those specific facts that research that data that's going to give them the opportunity to create good strategies i've always said marketing's easy your customers will tell you exactly what you need to do but you've got to ask them and so good marketing is only as good as the research that accompanies it. And then very little, um, you know, typically we don't require a whole lot of research other than what comes from a peer reviewed article, which is already old information. What's currently going on? How does that apply to the marketplace? And it, it's real world marketing research, not typically the research that comes out of those peer reviewed articles. And then, you know, are we still doing terminology tests? And that terminology is good to know and understand, but how does it relate to what you're doing as far as working with a real project, a real customer? And then multiple choice tests. Uh, students have learned how to game those multiple choice tests, so I try not to um, give those wherever possible um, because I just, I, I've seen them game them over the years and I mean, even, even we know how to do that, right? So looking at those real world applications. So I am just about out of time. Does anybody have any questions, comments, things that you've seen that have helped students in your classrooms? Dennis? I do a lot of group work where I give the students a real world type project and, it, and, and it's thematic so it runs the entire course. Um, so that I'll give them, let's say, a, a, a business description. Then we're talking about SEO that day. Create an SEO plan for your group and then they have to present it and then we have you know, some critique and whatever and I'm, I'm getting really good buy-in with that kind of thing where it, where they have to make decisions. That's, that's the point of those exercises. They must make decisions. Yeah. Well, and I know, I, I know we've traditionally always done the group assignments and I love the group assignments. You get some students who like the group assignments and some students who hate the group assignments. And they'll say to me, well, just be easier if I could do it on my, all by myself. And I said, well, but that's not really, in real world, there's very few decisions you make all by yourself. And, uh, you know, I've had students too, uh, this is my other favorite thing that they say, I want to be an entrepreneur because I don't want anybody telling me what to do. <laughs> and I said, so you're not going to have any customers. And they just look at me, I said, your customers are going to tell you what to do all the time. And you really kind of need to listen to them in many instances if you want your business to be successful. Um, the other place where they get people telling them what to do is the government. <laughs> telling you, you know, pay us now, here, are, here, we have more taxes for you, we need, you know, here's your health inspection, here's your this and your that, and all the many, many, many things that you have to do as a business to keep up with just the rules and regulations of running a business. So, you know, it's, 
it's, you've got to always be working with people. Anybody else, any questions or comments, things that you've seen? Well, thanks so much. I really enjoyed having you here. I hope we've all gotten, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff I've heard from different presenters and all the different topics that are available at this conference. So thank you, Stukent, for putting it on. And thank you for great simulations, because I really do love using those. And they're, they're phenomenal for my online classes that I teach. So I really um, it gives the students an extra something. And it kind of creates almost that gaming environment that so many of our students are used to. So thanks. Yeah.